What's good? What's up, Messy Mob? It's your girl, Messy Maya, and I'm back again with another video. So as you can see by the title and the video that's playing right now, we are about to recap The Little Mermaid. This has been a long time coming. I actually seen it the opening weekend, so I don't know why this took me so long to do, but it's better late than never, so let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so the first song is Scuttlebutt. This is featuring Scuttle and Sebastian, of course, aka Aquafina and David Diggs. Me personally, I would probably give this song about a 5 or 6 out of 10. Um, no, actually, I would rate it a little bit higher. So I would say between 7 and 8. So we'll just go with 7.5. I say this because although a lot of people did not like the song, I really did think it was catchy. But Scuttle's, it's just Scuttle's voice. It's just like, ooh, like a little nails on the chalkboard. But I feel like the voice really does go good with the character. Um, so I didn't mind it. Again, I have to remember, I'm 23 years old. This is a, a children's movie. And this song was clearly for the kids. So we'll go with the 7.5. Like I said, it wasn't too bad. Um... And it was actually catchy. I feel like people hate it so much is because people hate Aquafina. So I, because I feel like people were picking on Scuttle to begin with. Um, because, because y'all say the song is a zero out of 10, but I feel like if it was voiced by a different voice actor, y'all would not be saying that. Y'all just hate Aquafina. So yeah, I liked it, especially Sebastian's little rap solo. Yeah, I liked it. I liked the song. Okay. So like I said, 7.5 out of 10. Okay, so within the movie, there are multiple times where she did sing Part of Your World, but she did it in different ranges, and there were even two different versions of Part of Your World. So I'm going to try to get through them as, as, as quick as I can. Please bear with me. Okay, so the first Part of Your World was the very first song that she performed of the film. It was the first song of the film overall, and I am so happy that they went with that because this version was amazing. It was right after Flounder accidentally snitched on Ariel for basically going out and exploring um, the objects from the human world and they actually almost got, you know, killed by a shark. But um, it was right after that when King Triton, of course, is telling her, you know damn well, I don't want you out there. I don't want you exploring their stuff. And she goes, she goes and she sings. And this version to me, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I think that it was so filled with so much emotion. Like the way she was sing, like she, it's like almost like she was, I know it's going to sound crazy, but it's like she was acting through her singing. Like you could feel her emotion. You could feel her desperation to go into the human world. You can feel how frustrated she is with her dad that he doesn't understand her curiosity and her fascination with the human world and that he's being so stubborn and not letting her go. That's what I took from it. I don't know what you guys took from it, but it was so powerful. It was so amazing. I felt every emotion when she did sing this song. I even cried in the theater. Yes, at my big age, at my big 23-year-old age, I was crying during this song. She did amazing. I love this song. Definitely a 10 out of 10 for me. So she sang another, I'm not going to say another version. It was the same song, but she pretty much sang it in a different range when she brought Eric back to shore after saving his life. This is basically what starts Eric's obsession with finding the quote unquote girl who saved his life because since he was still unconscious, basically all he heard was her voice. I thought this part of the movie was very beautiful. It's basically when she really gets to see him in the light um, see what he looks like up close and personal. And again, you can just feel the emotion while she's singing quietly to him while he is still unconscious. Still a 10 out of 10 for me. Still a 10 out of 10. It was still beautiful. Let's go to the next one. 
Okay, so this is a little exhausting. Okay, so this is the basically like the third. It's not a version, y'all. So she sings these songs. So the first three times that she sang Part of Your World in three different scenes, they were like in different ranges. Like, I hope you guys are staying with me. So in this range, this one was like a more aggressive one. And I don't know like how to feel about it. I didn't think it was bad, but I'm like... What? Because she went like singing all softly and, you know, brushing Eric's hair with her fingers and singing at him and looking at him while he's still unconscious to like two minutes later, she's on the rock, like singing it super aggressive. Like I was like, hold on. But no, she still sounded beautiful. Um she still sounded beautiful. It was, again, just a more aggressive attempt. I don't know what you guys took from it again, but from what I took from this one, I feel like now that she actually is on the surface, you know, and she really got up close and personal with him, I feel like that desperation got a little stronger. So she was singing stronger. Like now that, you know what I'm saying? Like she was actually on land. She actually sang to Eric. She actually caressed his face and put her fingers through his hair. So I feel like now she's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I really got to come here now. So it was a little bit more like aggressive. Like, ooh, like, yeah, I, I got to come. I got to come. On. I got to come now. Like, that's what I took from it. But it was still beautiful. I still loved it. I rate this one mm, probably about like 8.5, 8.5. I didn't care for the little rock crawl I didn't care for that I'm gonna just but I'm gonna just act like she didn't do that I didn't I didn't know I didn't understand what was happening when she y'all know what I'm talking about but still beautiful let's move on to the last version so the last version or range whatever you want to call it is actually its own separate song it is called part of your world reprise so this version was amazing. It was honestly up there with the very first um, number that she did, Part of Your World, when she was underwater. It was amazing. So she sang this song after Vanessa basically steals Eric away from her and he be wish she be wished Eric so now Eric is about to marry her right after the day that her and Eric spent all that time together so she literally fell in love with him and then the next day he got bewitched and was starting the process of getting married to Vanessa so she left the castle and then Eventually, they show her all sad and stuff, and then this is when she starts to sing this song. The very first lyric is, risking it all only to fall back where I started. Like, don't tell me those are not bars. Because if you understand, if you know, you know. So if you watched the movie, you would know that... She went against her own dad. She left her family. She literally went to a sea witch to get legs, to become part of the human world, and to meet Eric. And you know what I'm saying? It's it, No matter how stupid you may think it is, you know what I'm saying? You know, she's a teenager. That's a boy crazy. No matter how dumb you think it is that she did that, it's the fact that she risked so much to do it. So for him to literally only, so for him to literally end up marrying somebody else, especially after the day that they had and what she went through to get where she was, you just felt all of that emotion. I know y'all, I keep saying emotion, 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 but Hallie really portrayed emotion through Ariel. Like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, she really did an amazing job. She did an amazing job. So 10 out of 10, let's move on. So the last two songs that I am going to review, and I know that there were more songs, but I kind of just want to get to the other categories. So the last two songs that I am going to talk about is Uncharted Waters by Eric, aka Jonah. And we're going to talk about Under the Sea with Davy Diggs, aka Sebastian, 
featuring Ariel, a.k.a. Hallie. First of all, the fact, I just love as a whole for what they did with Eric's character. I'm not going to get too much into it because I'm going to get into it later, but I love, I absolutely love how they gave Eric a song. It was a little out of nowhere, but I'm telling y'all, he killed it. Like, the actor Jonah, he really, child, I'm just calling these people by their first names like I know them. But anyways, he killed it. I loved, I feel like his voice was just so soft. I loved it. They made Eric so much more than the pretty boy. Like, we got to see his personality, and then we got to hear him sing. We got to see um, basically how he's conflicting um, with basically being adopted into a royal family. Like I said, I'm going to save that for a little bit later. But overall, I just love what they did with Eric, Eric's character and this song. I love it. Definitely, I would say a 9.5 out of 10. Okay, Under the Sea. I'm going to make this short. So Under the Sea was very good. Davy Diggs did amazing as Sebastian. And this song just, it was just everything that I wanted to be. It was very vibrant. Um, I do know a lot of concerns, not from me, but from people, child. You know how everybody wanted to criticize the movie in every single way that they could. One of the concerns or criticisms um, about the movie was that it was going to be quote unquote too dark which is crazy because people were saying this before the movie even came out, um, which is just crazy. But anyways, however, that was one of the concerns. But this scene just proved otherwise. It was just as bright and vibrant as a cartoon. And honestly, it was better than a cartoon because it was a live action. Like the fact that they were able to achieve this look with a live action Oh my gosh, it was so vibrant, so beautiful. It looked so realistic. Yeah, they just showed the beauties of Under the Sea. And the scene as a whole definitely embodied the entire song. I love that um, with this version, they actually had Ariel singing like in the background a little bit. I love the whole song. I'm going to rate this one also a 9.5 out of 10. Okay, so the cast is Hallie, David, Javier, Jacob, Melissa McCartney, Jonah, and Aquafina. And I'm going to go ahead and talk about um, their characters and how I feel they brought their characters to life and how they did it. And I'm basically going to give my thoughts on their performance. Let's talk about Prince Eric. Jonah's portrayal of Prince Eric was amazing. From his curiosity to him starting to gain feelings for Ariel, to him being bewitched, to him trying to find the dream girl that saved him. Every single scene, even the scene with the shipwreck and where he was celebrating his 21st birthday, every single scene that he was in was amazing. Yeah, I really don't know how else to put it? I really just love what they did with his character. They gave his character so much personality. And um, we kind of got to see his backstory. We learned that he was adopted and how he's um, adjusting, not adjusting to the adoption, because basically he was adopted into a royal family. So he's trying to find his place as a prince. Not only that, but just like the way that Ariel is curious and just you know, she's very curious about the human world. He is also curious about her world as well. And his mom is very opposed to it. She tells him the sea gods, they don't like us. Um, basically, I don't want to spoil anything, but I, okay, so I'm going to do it. So skip if you don't want anything to be spoiled. But um, basically, they built their land. So everything, of course, was water at one point. So they built their castle in their land, which of course is huge, where the waters are. So basically, they're saying that the sea gods don't like them and the sea gods hate them because they're like bringing their territory onto their waters. So she tells him the sea gods, they're not good people. They hate us. They despise us. They're dangerous. 
But despite all of this negativity that she's spewing uh, onto him, he still is so curious and so open-minded about the sea world. And Jonah portrayed that perfectly. I honestly cannot stress that enough. I really don't have any complaints about Jonah's acting. Okay, let's talk about Hallie's performance as Ariel. So clearly the singing part, she completely blew out of the park. Her singing was amazing. Like I said, um, she just showed so much emotion through the songs. Um, everything that she was feeling, I feel like I don't know what the, the other the other people in the audience captured, but I feel like I captured every emotion that Ariel was feeling through the songs that she sang. But other than the singing, there's also the acting as well. I feel like Hallie did an amazing job portraying Ariel. Ariel is curious. She's bold. You know, she's willing to take risks. I feel like I feel like Hallie did a really good job at embodying Ariel as well. I don't know about you guys, but she just gives me Disney princess. Like she gives me princess. Like she really does. Just like what I said with Jonah and his portrayal is Eric. I definitely understand why she was chosen to be Ariel um, outside of the singing. Of course, Ariel is known for her voice. That's the main plot of the story. But outside of the singing, I feel like Hallie did a pretty decent job at portraying Ariel. And it was one of her first leads in a movie. Literally, she said in an interview that um, that was her first actual like lead in a movie. She did amazing. For that to be her very first lead, I feel like she did amazing. It was maybe a couple parks where I felt like she could have uh, showed a little bit more emotion. But besides that, as a whole, she portrayed Ariel she, she, beyond my expectations. She did amazing. Moral of the story, Ariel is sweet and soft and kind, but she is also ambitious, strong, and curious. So yeah, she definitely brought that to the character. And she's beautiful. What? She is so pretty. Melissa McCarthy brought so much to Ursula. I loved, listen, Ursula's scenes were actually the my, one of my favorite parts of the movie. I absolutely loved every scene that Ursula was in, especially when her and Ariel were doing the deal. Although Ursula is evil in the Sea Witch, I feel like Melissa McCarthy brought a lot of comedic relief to the character, which was amazing to see. She killed poor unfortunate souls. I am sorry that I didn't mention it in the beginning, but I already was taking too long with the song uh, reviews anyway, so I just kind of wanted to speed it up, but I'll kind of do it right here. Poor unfortunate souls was amazing. She did a very good job. Like I said, she brought comic relief to the character, but you could still feel the evil. You could still feel that she's very vindictive and manipulative. Yes, she did an amazing job. I absolutely loved the scenes. Every scene that Ursula was in, I loved it. Especially when she turned big at the end. Like, what? Like, come on now. Ariel had my dog stressed the whole movie. Nah, but David Diggs did a really good job as Sebastian. Yeah, I really don't have anything to say about this. I thought that the character was really funny, brought a lot of comedic relief to the film. Um... You could feel him stressing the whole time. Ariel had him stress. He did a really good job. So Aquafina as Scuttle. I also thought that she did a really good job. Um, yeah, Scuttle was annoying in the animation. He's an, uh, And she's annoying in the live action. I don't know what else to say. Um, Scuttle's supposed to be an annoying character. Clearly she nailed it. But she was also funny as well. King Triton. Huh, <sighs> okay. So I'm not attacking attacking Javier's acting, but I just feel like he could have used a little bit more emotion. Like you're a father of seven. Have a little more compassion, have a little more emotion. I feel like he was at times he was just very emotionless. Like I couldn't 
Like, clearly I can tell how he's feeling because he's saying how he feels, but lack of expression, lack of emotion, ugh, I don't know. Even when he destroyed Ariel's collectibles, like, I feel like he could have showed and portrayed so much more anger than that. Like, he's like, this has to stop now. I'm like, boy, if you don't, if you don't like yell, scream, like just show that you're mad, get mad. Like you're not, you're just not mad enough for me. So his acting wasn't terrible, but it's just like, you know, he could have, I could have, I could have used a little bit more emotion from him. It wasn't terrible. It wasn't terrible. Just a lack of emotion. That's all. Like when he came back to life, when he came back to life, I literally felt nothing. Like, I'm like, hug your daughter. Like, you know what I'm, well, they did hug, but I'm like, it just wasn't emotional. Like, what is going on right now? But, ugh, yeah. He's like really the only actor that I have complaints about. <laughs> but okay, let's go ahead and go to Flounder. Okay, so Flounder, Jacob. Okay, so Jacob did amazing as Flounder. Um, I feel like I kind of wish that Flounder was in the movie a little bit more. You know, he's Ariel's best friend. And I feel like they just didn't put him in the movie enough. I really would. Like I said, I just wish he had more screen time. But other than that, the few parts that he were he was in, I feel like Jacob did a really good job at portraying Flounder. So for this movie to be as long as it was, they did leave out quite a few scenes which was this one the sister song that was the opening sing of the animation they also left out the chef scene yeah <laughs> the scene with ariel in her sparkly dress and her transformation into a human yeah we did not get that part either we also missed the wedding between ariel and eric so as you can see, they left out quite a few scenes. Honestly, like I said, this movie was over two hours long. For it to be over two hours long, I don't understand why they left out so many scenes. But, I mean, I'm pretty sure they had their reasons behind leaving out these scenes. I don't know. But I really do do hope that in an upcoming interview, someone actually asks them that question. So overall, for me, the movie was about... I would say a strong nine. The movie was really good. The acting was really good. The musical numbers were really good. I absolutely loved it. I'm also going to take this time to mention just a few things that I may have forgotten. First, I'm going to give a little shout out to Jess Alexander. She played Vanessa. They didn't have any cast photos of her. So that's why I didn't include um, a review of her performance. But although she was on screen for less than 10 minutes, she ate up every single scene. She did really good. Yeah, she really portrayed Vanessa well. I also forgot to mention Vanessa's trick. And I forgot to mention for the first time. These two songs are sang by Hallie and she did an amazing job. But I did, um, because I was kind of trying to speed up the song portion of the video because it already was taking a long time, I kind of skipped past those two songs. But those two songs were amazing. I really do like them. Let me know what you think about the movie. Let me know what you think about the video. I really don't care if you agree with me or not, but do not come on here with that hateful stuff. I just don't have the energy for it. Um, it's just super childish, super hateful, super miserable. I don't want that energy on my... <laughs> I just don't because this is a very lighthearted video. I just wanted to come on here and review the movie and give my honest opinion. I understand that some people didn't agree with the casting, but don't bring that hatefulness on my video. Please and thank you. You will get your feelings hurt and blocked. But I don't care if you agree with me or not. Just be respectful in the comments and we can talk about it. So let me know. And bye, guys. This is Messy Maya.